does PlayStation have a 2024 games problem? Yes, but also I will say I think there's some serious nuance here that's really lost on this conversation of Sony's upcoming release cadence. That, and there's also something that I think many are completely overlooking, but it's a matter of, you know, going into this growing sentiment and fear of people looking at, you know, PlayStation Studios, and for a while it's been like, hey, we know about all these great PS5 games coming out, oh wait, now they're finally all out, Spider-Man 2 being the last one, and now we don't know much else for 2024 and beyond. So... The thing is, this uh, this current Q1 for 2024, we do know it's pretty front-loaded. There's still a lot of games coming out fairly soon. It's just in-house studios is the problem. We only know about The Last of Us Part Two Remastered uh, coming out very soon, which, you know, that's something where it is a remaster, but um, it, is, it does have a $10 upgrade fee for, you know, existing owners with those lost levels and the no-return roguelite modes. So there is something there for uh, people to, to jump back into and explore for a bit. Uh, but between that, and also Concord, which is, uh, we don't have a release date for that, so that very well could be a back half of 2024 game, so that's one we can say that's a title coming out later this year, um, assuming it is on time, but that means we should be seeing gameplay fairly soon, because all we have is a cinematic trailer of a burger falling apart in space. Not exactly the most thrilling thing to look at and be excited for, but that is Firewalk's uh, PvP first-person shooter uh, sci-fi, and so that should be coming out later this year. Um, but Sony likes to also fill out that portfolio and release schedule with third parties as well, right? They, they've always done this. So uh, in the case of third party, we know there's also, uh, well, in terms of external studios, I guess we could say, right? Because they kind of play fast and loose with PlayStation Studios. Uh, Helldivers 2, very much a PS Studios game and that Sony owns the IP, but that's uh, being made by an external studio, Arrowhead. That's coming out very soon, February 8th, uh, PS5 and PC. Uh, there's Rise of the Ronin, so this is where, you know, Sony does not own that IP, but they now consider that a PS Studios title. Either way, it's a PS5 exclusive coming out March 22nd. Then there's also Stellar Blade, so we can presume that title is probably also now treated as a PS Studios game. That's to be announced as well, so that's also probably a you know, back half of the year candidate. Uh, but there's also the sort of AA space, right? Your Can of Bridge of Spirit or uh, Stray, Bug Snack, Sifu. We've got Pacific Drive coming this year. Uh, well, very soon, February 22nd. Uh, but the other AAA partnered games that are third party, that would be Grand Blue Fantasy Relink on February 1st. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, February 29th. Uh, Silent Hill 2 as a timed exclusive. Uh, we're hearing that game might be relatively soon, so maybe Q1, Q2, but even if it was later in the year, that would certainly fill out that, that release schedule that we're talking about. Um, but it's still primarily a first party problem. What is, what is going on with all these studios 2024 and beyond? Now the past two, three years that we've done a sort of portfolio review of looking at every single studio and what they're doing, what we've heard based on rumors and speculation and when they last shipped their you know previous game, Every time we do these conversations, a lot of those studios, it was always, they're not ready, they're not ready, they're not ready. Now, many of these teams may be ready to show something, but there is a key difference here. But first, let's uh, go over all those studios. So the one that we have to acknowledge here is Insomniac Games, where unfortunately they did have that breach. And so it would be very hard to you know talk about this without at least acknowledging that. Uh, we did find out Wolverine, that that game announcement was very close to when that deal was even signed to do Wolverine. So the game is expected much later in 2026. And we may or may not be seeing another title before then. And so that's where we'll leave Insomniac, as in we might be seeing something from them uh, within the short term. But other studios, Blue Point Games, they shipped Demon Souls in 2020. They also, since then, they've been providing support on God of War. Uh, publicly, they've said they're working on new original content, and that's always been a very particular phrase that they've used, original content, not only publicly, but also internally, because that was, again, something that showed up in the Insomniac Breach. It says original content, not new IP. I still think that is something worth uh, pointing out, but still, based on the timeline, the scope and size of the team, you know, they're not doing anything crazy. Maybe we could see something uh, this year. Many of these studios, some are going to be more likely than others, but there's also Fire Sprite. They have multiple teams, one being a AAA multiplayer action title, which 
we are hearing that they may, that may possibly be a Twisted Metal game, which based on the context of what we've heard about that title, where it was originally at Lucid Games, passed over to uh, Fire Sprite sometime around late 2021, early 2022, that might still need some time in the oven, but they do have another team that is working on a dark horror title, so... We might see that one fairly soon. Guerrilla Games has a multiplayer co-op Horizon game that has been in development for a long time, and we might finally be ready to see what's going on with that game, uh, and possibly a Horizon remaster for PS5. That's been a growing rumor as well, and these two things are going concurrently with them um, going into very early production on, you know, uh, Horizon 3, which is going to be much further out, but uh, those two things could be more in the short term. Haven Studios has fair games, so we could get a new trailer for for that with actual gameplay. So much like Concord, we could get an idea of if we can even be excited about what that sales pitch for the game is, right? So um, in between that and Gorilla, you know, this kind of goes into Sony's live service efforts where we know half of those titles are either, well, half of them are not coming out within the timeline that Sony originally set out, which was, you know, fiscal year 2026, not happening. Now they want to do at least six by uh, fiscal year 2025 and the other six are further out, but we already know that like one of them was canceled, possibly more. Um, but either way, there's there's that, right? So that goes into London Studio. They have a fantasy uh, multiplayer live service game set in London. I think that might be more unlikely in terms of all these studios, but uh, Naughty Dog also has a new AAA single player game they've been working on, separate from the recently canceled The Last of Us multiplayer, also separate from The Last of Us Part 1 and also Part 2 Remastered. Some people still cannot really cope with the idea that those games were not impeding on this other thing that they're working on, but very much that's been in production for a while, and so it may not be ready to release within this year. I think that much is a given, but there's many things we could see this year. Um, so then there's also Santa Monica Studio. They have a new IP that's been underway for a number of years as well. Um, and there's still rumors about more God of War content, but we'll leave that there. Uh, Sucker Punch might finally be ready to pull the curtain away from the next Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Team Asobi, if they are working on uh, a more moderately sized title, then we could very well see something announced and shipped by the end of this year. That was one of my uh, predictions for this year. But uh, still, it's something where every time we talk about all these studios, it's always been they're not ready. But I think a number of those teams are in a very good position. You know, Media Molecule, we know they're working on a new IP that just started this or last year, I should say. <laughs> very little chance we're seeing them. Same with like Housemark or Ben Studio, they started their new projects between 2021 and 2022. So um, those are unlikely, but everything else I think has a fair shot of at least showing off something this year. But that's where we have to talk about the shift in strategy, which is how Sony announces their games. It very much is a lot different compared to PS4. The company previously was very predictable. And what I mean is they would always show up to every single press event. We always knew a date and time. They would be at E3, Paris Games Week, Gamescom, um, TGS, uh, or they would even do their own events with PSX. And so we always had this, this time and place where we knew they're going to be here and they're probably going to talk about game X, Y, and Z based on what was announced uh, or what studio has been you know far long enough based on rumors. We That's how they were very predictable, but now that's not the case. We wait for state of plays, showcases, and a lot of PlayStation blog posts. Uh, and the other thing too is that you know because they lean on the PlayStation blog so much, there's this perception that they don't talk nearly as much about these games. Uh, up until they're finally ready uh, ready to release within two months. That's when the real marketing campaign kicks off. That's always typical. It's always two months before launch. It's not special to PS5 where they start doing uh, ads across TV, web, retail. But when we had all those trade shows and the actual proper marketing cycle, the entire time feels like a marketing cycle, whereas nowadays there was serious doubt that Spider-Man 2 was not going to release on time because they only showed a few, you know, <laughs> they only did a little bit of gameplay and then within two months, oh, now the marketing starts, right? So that's where it's different. But um, the other big comparison that I wanted to seriously take a look at here is how Sony used to announce with the reveal and then shipping games during the late PlayStation 4 cycle compared to the early PlayStation 5 cycle. 
And there is a difference, which is generally across the board, all these titles on PS4 were announced a lot sooner. Uh, now there's some outliers, and this is always gonna depend on the, the studio and project scope, and many of these games, dare I say all of them, in some way, shape, or form have faced a delay. So Horizon Zero Dawn and Days Gone, or excuse me, Horizon Zero Dawn and Gran Turismo Sport uh, were announced and released within 20 to 23 months, and that's a comparable to Horizon Forbidden West and also Gran Turismo 7, a very comparable time, which I think speaks more to those studios. But between both those timelines, you know, those games were either delayed on PS4 because they just were and that's how game development is uh, or they were delayed on ps5 because covid all the ps5 titles were developed under covid conditions where pretty much everything all those studios were set back in a number of ways trying to figure out how to make games under that under those kind of conditions work from home putting builds in the cloud and so it was a, a complete mess but what you'll find for other titles across the board and trying to find comparables is that Games just get announced and released a lot sooner for PlayStation 5, which tells us that Sony is very likely in a position where they're encouraging these teams to, you know, not talk or show things, or they're not asking for these materials for state of plays or, or whatever until they feel much more confident that they're going to release. So all these games have had delays in some way, shape, or form, but generally we can see that <laughs> the announcement to release is shorter between 20 and 21 months. Uh, some smaller budget games like Returnal, obviously, uh, relative to the larger size of, say, a Horizon or Spider-Man, right? So it's still a big game, but um, that was announced and released within 10 months. Uh, so other comparables could be Helldivers 2 at eight months, revealed May 2023, released, uh, or it's going to release February 8th, 2024. Um, but you know, Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Forbidden West, uh, also God of War Ragnarok with, uh, not only the COVID delays, but Christopher Judge apparently needed a surgery in August, 2019, which did set some things back. But we know all three of these games were planned for release in 2021, not 2022. So ideally they wanted to get them out sooner, but we really cannot undermine just how much of an impact COVID had on game development in terms of it being an unforeseen circumstance. You know, game delays do happen across a number of titles, but it's a matter of looking at a situation that was probably not expected on the production pipeline for all these games. So in theory, it would be a reasonable thing to say that they maybe were going to release a lot of these titles in 2021 right on time, if not for COVID. So considering that and the the rest of the release timeline, and there's, there's many other aspects that make this a bit difficult in terms of trying to pin down I guess a pattern here, right? Because we're trying to make a, trying to look at all these um, release schedules from when these games shipped on PS4, when they were originally announced. And is this something where we can expect that for the later half of the PS5 cycle that they are planning to announce and then ship within a 10 month minimum upwards of, you know, around 20, 25 months, which is kind of similar to PS4, but this is where it also gets a bit complicated in that <laughs> when you're building new IP, that will generally take a lot longer. And sometimes a studio just puts out a cinematic trailer to either, you know, engage interest for, you know, fielding talent if they need that. Although PlayStation Studios tends to not really have that problem, but they are always hiring and sometimes that's just the case, right? I, we're, we're speaking more generally, so it's really hard to have this conversation. But um, with sequels, which PS5 got a lot of, they're building, you know, they're, they're building off of existing systems, worlds, animations, reusing assets. I mean, so, you know, that that's part of what probably really helped a lot of those uh, early life cycle PlayStation 5 games come out within a pretty good timeline, <laughs> even considering COVID. So it, it's, it's, it's tough to say. That's why I think this is a lot more nuanced. But the other angle that I think is worth considering here is that Sony does fill out their portfolio in a much different way compared to PlayStation 4, which is we are seeing a lot of partnerships. Um, they're expanding XDev in a very big way, and there's a number of XDev rumors that we've not even touched on in this uh, conversation which is pretty much, that's still gonna be PlayStation Studios. It, it's just, you know, from external studios that Sony's partnering with. And uh, we've had a number of uh, rumors that we've been following for the past two, three years, which could very well see announcements as well. And um, it kind of goes into the smaller projects, you know, because when we do look back, uh, look back at our release 
timelines of announced to release, you know, some of the smaller scale stuff from more, you know, the, the titles that are operating on a mod, uh, a modest budget, uh, or if they are a remaster or a port or whatever, which I know people tend to write those off, but you know, we saw a number of, uh, early life cycle PS five games have a very fast turnaround from that as well. Um, so, you know, it's not like Sony doesn't have some kind of uh, release timeline here, right? Where uh, they are they are very likely looking to fill out their portfolio in ways that, uh, you know, if, if, if a first party studio is not ready, then you're, you're going to get something else in its place. It may be XDev, it may be... Uh, some sort of new inspiring indie that they want to partner with and it launches day one in a PS plus it may be marketing rights for a title that they're just having heavy association with and trying to make it seem as though that's you know a PlayStation title or it could be a proper third-party exclusive that they've locked down in perpetuity um, but I think we are bound to see some announcements that paint a better picture of let's say late 2024 that can oftentimes very much be disguised as a way of it being you know PS studios or or like all oh, these are first party games or whatever whatever the case is right but what i think we can safely say is that we're probably not going to get some kind of you know left field landmark triple a new ip announcement this year and then see it ship by this year and that's where it may be a problem for some but if we assume that sony might be operating on a faster timeline here of wanting to not you know not revealing titles until they're probably ready to release within a shorter time again shorter timeline to ps4 is what we're trying we're trying to find that pattern here if there is one and COVID really just kind of set a lot of the stuff back then in theory we could also have some confidence knowing that if we get a lot of game announcements this year which we should if we don't that's where i i would then say yeah we've got a bit of a problem here if sony doesn't start you know really talking about some of these titles but when they do it would be something where, okay, they're, say, 2025, 2026, but we might have a bit of confidence knowing that they'll ship within that um, release window, right? So that's uh, kind of where I think we should leave the conversation. But with that said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.